For this review we revisit one of the great Crane models. It's the Liebherr LTM 11200 and it's in the colours of Hartinger. Hartinger Krambetrieb is a German company. Also later in the review we'll look at the extension kits for the Liebherr 11200 model. To start with we'll look at the Crane and it comes in a Liebherr branded box. It's heavy and there are three separate trays. Also included is a fairly comprehensive instruction sheet which covers most of the assembly. In the top tray of the box there are spreader plates and other parts and in the second tray there are counterweights, free hooks and the lattice boom. Finally you get to the bottom tray and that's the heaviest part with both the carrier and the boom. The packaging on the model is of a very high standard. If you want to see the full multi-part series review of this model in yellow, then click away on the link. There's one bit of pre-assembly to do before the model can be displayed in a transport configuration and that involves the connection of the straps which join the wire guy arrangement to the foot of the boom. Just like on the rest of the model these connections are made using tiny nuts and bolts and special tools are provided to be able to do them up. Of course for the nuts and bolts we're dealing with very small parts here so if you drop them on the floor expect to get out the magnifying glass. The straps are made of a nice pliable metal so they can be set to hang properly and when the Y guy is not in use they fold down into position. With that done it's then possible to use the boom par and the crane in a transport configuration. If you also use the lattice section that's included with the model then with two suitable heavy haulage vehicles you can make up a very interesting and impressive display. For the rest of the assembly section of this video we'll set the crane up ready to work but we'll show it as a stop motion film. Yes it's competition time! In the assembly sequence the Cranes Etc team have made a big error. Can you spot it? The answer's at the end of the video. Remember the answer to the competition is at the end of the video. Here's the crane all set up and ready to lift and it looks great in Hartinger colours. Starting with the crane in laid back mode and the details really good underneath with the suspension modelled. And the wheels are particularly good because they have differing hub designs and Michelin on the sidewall of the tyres. The driving cab has good beacon lights and a number plate and the detail behind the cab is good too. At the back there are good looking lights, graphics and ladders. The grab rails on the crane cab are plastic but there's decent detail inside. The counterweights are hefty chunks of metal all with very good graphics. Up on top the winch drums and handrails all look convincing. The jackets on the big rams are plastic but the colour match is good. The boom and wire guy arrangement are nearly all metal and it's very strong. There are three different hooks applied with the model and they're all metal and high quality and all of the pulleys are metal too. For a full review of the features click the link on the screen and that takes you to the video series for the yellow version of the model. 
As the Hartinger continues to be in a laid back mode, we can see that each of the axles is independently sprung. And each axle also independently steers. So that means you can emulate all of the steering modes of the real crane. And that includes conventional steering or crab steering where all of the wheels point in the same direction. The axles are all stiff enough to hold the pose, so if you set the steering and push the model, it will steer in a nice curve. It would certainly scare the hell out of your neighbours if you left it parked outside your front door. One other thing to note about this version of the model is that the main boom rams were looser than on earlier versions, but they can be pinned at full extension. Now we'll move on and have a look at two extension kits for the crane. The first is the smaller 36 meter extension kit. It is in red and it has model number 7323-10. The kit is intended to extend the optional luffing jib kit, but in fact it's also worth getting on its own. This kit is in red, but the first thing to say is it's not quite the same red as on the Hartinger crane. So there is an optical difference if you use this kit and the Hartinger crane together. However, another possibility is to use the kit with the crane in Denzai Juki colours. Again, there is a colour difference in the parts, but actually it's much closer to the Denzai Juki than it is to the Hartinger. And for practical purposes, the difference is hard to see. The lattice sections in this smaller kit are nicely made. And certainly one possibility for the kit on its own is to be used as transport loads. And it's good to see that the parts have been properly sized, just like those on the real crane, so that the parts can be telescoped together in order to reduce the amount of transport required. And as soon as we say transport's required, here comes some transport. Put the jib sections on, and on its own it makes a good display piece. But you could also use these parts to extend the lattice section that comes with the base model. And that's why the kit is good value on its own, because it allows the base model to be expanded, even if you don't have the space for the full luffing fly jib. So out come the tools, and after a bit of work, you can see we get an extended fixed jib. There is a small point about the scaling at the bottom of the jib, where the bolts can't quite go in straight. Still, you can make a connection, and then we can join the whole thing up to the crane. After that, it's just a quick bit of reeving up with the hoist rope. And then we end up with a useful and impressive extension of the crane. By configuring it this way, there's also the possibility of posing the jib at an angle. And that makes use of the section that has hydraulic rams in it. Those rams really are quite stiff, so they're able to hold the jib at an angle quite easily. And just to see what kind of an extension it gives on the top of the main boom. And it adds about 26 inches or 66 centimetres. So overall this is a nicely made kit and it's highly recommended. The other extension kit for the model is the Luffing Fly Jib Assembly and it's much larger and more expensive. The one we're looking at here is also in red and it has model number 7322-10. It's a big box and it's got two layers of trays. Also with this kit is another set of assembly instructions. Looking inside, the top tray has a number of parts, including the top of the boom, and the bottom tray contains the rest, including this large luffing jib pivot section. Once again, the high quality packaging gives you the feel that this is a nice model to own. Again, on its own, the parts make good transport loads, and the pivot section certainly looks particularly good mounted on a truck. To install the luffing fly jib, there is a bit of work to do on the base model. And that includes removing the top sections of the telescopic boom. The instructions do tell you how to do it, but this is a good operation to actually see being done. And so here it is, and you pull out the telescopic section and push in the locking pin. The skillful part of the operation is then not just to pull out the top section, but to gently ease it out instead. And the reason for that is that if you're too quick on the pull out, then you might find that something ejects out and goes all over the place. In this case, that's the locking pin and the spring that holds it. The next operation is a bit of cosmetic work and that's to put a blanking plate over the open end of tube. And then the main connector for the Luffing fly jib can be hooked on and bolted into place. On top of the main body, the Luffing fly jib winch assembly gets added. And if you want to see details of that, go and see the video series mentioned earlier. Here we see the Luffing jib rigged and reeved, but not to its full extension. And it certainly looks great against the skyline, and it's an impressive piece of model engineering. One thing we can do is to study how the Y guy arrangement works. It stiffens up the boom to increase the capacity. You can see here that by winding in on one of the Y guy winches, you can pull the boom over a bit from its original position. 
So if you're winding both winches together, you can stiffen up the whole arrangement and the crane can lift more. The Luffing Jib Kit is a nice piece of model engineering by NZG and it's highly recommended. Okay, let's go back to our competition and see if you were right in spotting the error made by the Cranes Etc team. And it's this part here where the boom is over the back of the crane and it's lifted up. In fact, what should have happened before the boom is raised? The rear outrigger beams should have been set down. If you didn't spot that, then you're a disaster waiting to happen. The LTM 11200 is probably the most popular large crane model ever made. And this version in Hartinger colours is very attractive. The engineering's good, it's well made, and the details and features are good too. It's an outstanding model. 